welcome back to the studio. As we are powering things up for the day, I thought I would take an opportunity to answer a question from one of our subscribers, Chris Hill. Um, he had a uh, question regarding uh, interpreting the graphical information that we had provided in our August update. Uh, this is something that we're also going to be using in the future since Tesla added this tool to their uh, app to allow you to be able to scroll back and look at the individual daily graph for any day that the system's been in operation. Very useful because then that gives you that hour by hour feedback uh, to see where issues might exist and so uh, we'll be using that in the future. So let's start by looking at our graph for August 1st. Since this represents a fairly normal day, uh, it gives us a good place to start, and then we can look at some uh, other craziness uh, uh, in a little bit here. But uh, here you see the graph as it's displayed on the app. And so uh, let's start by uh, stripping away all the elements, and then we'll go through them one by one, and then what we'll do is we'll bring these elements back into it so you can see how they interact with one another. So. The first thing let's look at is we'll look at the home usage alone. So this shows the uh, raw usage of the home and you can draw kind of an imaginary line across the bottom of the graph there that never that the, the blue never dips below and this would represent kind of about a 0.6 kilowatt hour or, uh, or 0.6 kilowatt uh, um, baseline load of the home and that it's simply a load that the home always has. It represents things like a pond pump, uh, some lights in the home that are on constantly, uh, downstairs TV is on almost 24-7, that kind of a thing. And then we also see uh, little spikes here and there that represent turning on and off of coffee pots and microwave cooking and smaller bumps relating to things like refrigerator compressor coming on, uh, all of those little, uh, little loads. And then the intermittent humps that you see around noon, uh, 2 and 4 p.m., uh, those are likely from uh, oven baking and drying of clothes, those kinds of things. And then the plateaus that you see there, five, one of them at 5 a.m., that's pretty typical of what we see when our air circulating fan comes on. All right? And uh, then we uh, um, see one there that's uh, just before noon, and that's pretty typical of oven cooking. Uh, so those kind of things give you a, a way to kind of look at, at, at what's going on during the day there. And so then the three intermediate height spikes there, that's the AC system. And then that tall 21 kilo, kilowatt hour uh, or kilowatt spike is uh, from the vehicle charging and then it also looks like the AC has stacked on top of that as well. And so that brought that all up to a total draw of 21 kilowatts. And so uh, then that's followed by a couple hours of the circulating fan running before the home kind of returns to that 0.6 to 0.8 kilowatt kind of baseline uh, that, you, uh, that we have for the day. And so then the um, next graph here that we'll pull up, this is the solar contribution for the day. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of, of detail with this one, it's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll come back to this in a minute because it's interesting to see how your solar contribution throughout the day interacts with everything else, your battery charging and the home loads and that kind of a thing. So we'll, we'll come back to that. And so next we look at the uh, Powerwall performance graph. So there's a, there's a lot of information to unpack here, but the thing about this graph is that it's a little difficult to read on its own because everything that's happening here in your Powerwall performance, it's all related to other things that are going on. You can see that it's related to the solar contribution. You can see that obviously it's related to the uh, home loads, but you'll also see that the Powerwall throughout the day reacts with the ebb and flow, not only of the home's, uh, uh, the, the home's load itself, but if you have Oh, like a cloudy day where you've got that kind of fractured looking solar contribution. The power wall is able to react immediately as the clouds go over and then uh, clear up. Uh, so that, that type of thing becomes very interesting to see on the, uh, um, 
on the, the graph. Uh, also, by scrolling on the app, you can get to the two number as well. So you, you do have all the data available. I just don't have that shown here on this, uh, uh, on this screenshot. But uh, everything you see above the line, obviously, is where the power wall was delivering power to the home. And everything below the line is where the power wall was charging itself up. And so then lastly, we will look at the grid for the day. And again, pretty typical for a spring and summer day, uh, mostly flat with kind of the occasional switching ticks that you, uh, that you get in there. And again, uh, this graph doesn't mean much on its own, not until you combine it with other graphs uh, that you can then establish kind of relationships of what what it looks like in compared to your load. If you're getting these ticks, for example, let's take a look at uh, uh, if we combine the uh, grid power graph along with that home usage graph, we get this. And so now we can see what might have caused that uptick at 5 p.m., for example. And so in this case, it appears that that uptick was caused when the air conditioning compressor uh, had turned on. For some reason, the uh, gateway decided to go ahead and grab a little bit of, uh, uh, grab a little bit of power from the, uh, from the grid. Um, it's also uh, important to know this is, is not really a typical occurrence, so probably not something to be concerned about, and basically just a small switching error on the part of the gateway. But I will point out here that the gateway in its backup mode where you've got no access to the grid at all, doesn't even notice uh, any of these kinds of things. So obviously this, the uptick there was a result of the gateway doing something because it could and not because it needed to, but anyway. So now let's take a look at how uh, some of these other graphs can combine and give us some really uh, interesting feedback. And so one of those that gives us a good bit of insight is when you combine the power wall graph along with the home usage graph. And so that's what we have here. And so uh, this graph is really useful in showing us what portion of our daily load is either not covered by the power wall or where the power wall isn't needed to cover the, that load in the case of here where you can see that blue that exists uh, right in the middle of the day, that's obviously where power was being supplied by uh, solar. And so um, uh, much of the load there during the day, uh, you know, obviously there, there just isn't any battery power needed to cover the, uh, the home loads. And then any additional power over and above what the home uses, that's sent to the battery can be used later. You can see that if you see the reduction of, uh, of power to the power walls just after noon when that AC system comes on, well, you can still see that there's green between that zero line and uh, uh, the, the um, draw. And so what that tells us is, is that even though the AC was running, the batteries were still banking that excess sunlight. And uh, the charge to the vehicle is important as well. The fact that it's all green shows that that entire 21 kilowatts uh, of both vehicle charging uh, and the AC and home loads that were running at the time, those were all covered by the, uh, by the battery. Now, if this had been a four power wall system, what you'd have seen is that green would have fallen about a kilowatt or so short from the, uh, from the peak, and then one kilowatt would have been drawn from grid power to um, compensate for the amount that the battery was not able to supply. And so uh, with an understanding of all of this, now let's go ahead and look at the total combined uh, grid or graph and then see what, uh, uh, see what that can, can tell us. We've got some interesting details there. So Chris had specifically asked what caused that blue peaking up above the yellow and the green that you see on the peaks at 5 and 7 p.m. And our clue there is actually on that 7 p.m. spike. It's really easy to see there. If you look closely at the spike, what you'll notice is, is that it's got a flat top to it. And so this is obviously a load from our air conditioning system. Came on, ran, turned off. If you look closely at the green that sits just below it, you'll notice that the green part is ramped up and to the right. And so then if you look at the solar graph, you'll see that the solar contribution goes down and to the right, exactly mirroring what's going on uh, with the green. 
So then if you take a look at the amount uh, of the solar contribution that's above that zero line, right, and then you'll uh, be able to compare that to the volume, and the volume exactly matches the difference between that green top and the blue load. And so that shows us then that what's going on here is that you're seeing a combination of how the air conditioning load is split up with part of that load coming from the solar and the remainder coming from the battery. And so then as the solar contribution decreases, the battery ramps up to compensate for the uh, combined load. So that kind of things, thing becomes really apparent when you combine high loads, uh, things like vehicle charging uh, with the high solar contributions. Now, we saw that on the 4th of August, so we'll pull up the 4th. This is a really good uh, uh, example of, of that. So you can see here in that combination of solar power and battery power combining to supply those high continuous loads from the vehicle charging and even the AC that's uh, hitting above that and taking us all the way up to that uh, uh, 21 kilowatt uh, range there and while all of that craziness is is going on the grid is not involved at all and so now in August we did have a couple of days that uh, that you saw where we didn't make it until morning and one of those days was the 10th and so these can be kind of interesting here where you start to see the um, uh, amount of grid draw that you're seeing and so by touching the screen you can actually get a report of exactly what time the battery was depleted show that here and uh, that that's useful when you're trying to make decisions on things like how much reserve you want to leave in your system reducing your reserve setting slightly might make the difference between making it until morning or having to uh, draw a little bit of uh, power off of the grid. So uh, that's basically it. So I hope you found that useful. My uh, apologies that the graphs that I use look a little busy, but it's simply not possible to show all of the individual elements separately during those monthly uh, uh, presentations. It, just, it would just require way too many individual images to be able to kind of fade things in and out. So hopefully that helps you all deconstruct the graphs that, uh, that we're using, uh, at least you know, the way that we're presenting them on, the, um, uh, on our monthly updates. And so until next time, I wish you all the best of luck with your own systems, and we'll see you soon.